I need some parts, so I went shopping in the mailbag inbox looking for descriptions or tracking numbers that matched some of the things I need. And this first one is just more supplies. Mechanic solder, because I've been trying out various ones, the cheap ones that you can buy. Like this one I bought, I don't know when, it could be two or three years ago, but it really doesn't flow very well. So I just use this for miscellaneous things, like when I was testing out the airflow on the fume extractor fan, but otherwise I should probably just bring that to hazardous recycling. But the mechanic stuff I had good luck with. I tried this before, and this one's the 0.6 millimeter thin stuff, while this one is 1.2 millimeter thicker stuff, because I like to have something I can do for things like surface mount reworking or big through hole or heavy gauge wire soldering. And this mechanic stuff is probably the best low cost stuff next to the Kester sort of stuff I normally would buy. This one has a date of manufacture, July 2006. I'd, <laughs> it looks like I barely used it, but it is even way thinner than the thin one here that I normally use for surface mount. So I guess this is special purpose, but I think this will do me a while now. That's lots. And another thing that I've been using up a lot lately again on PCBs is screw terminals. The uh, 5.08 millimeter pitch as well as the 2.5 or 2.54 millimeter. So it looks like I got some of each and in this regular sized 5.08 millimeter I got two pin as well as three pin because then no matter what I need I can just stack these together and I often don't really need a lot like eight of them in a row but I do tend to use two for maybe power ground and maybe three for some sort of communications with ground TXRX ground or RS485 data plus minus and ground. So if I can figure out which way these go, I can lock these together and now I've got a five pin. So having an even and an odd number to work with, I can create whatever size I want. And then there's these smaller ones for small signal levels where I don't need a lot of current, but I do have limited board space. In this case, I did buy some that are, I don't know if this is an eight pin. Yeah, it looks like it. Because these don't stack side by side very well because there's extra space on the sides. So if I put two of these together to make a 16, maybe I can jam it in the circuit board with the play on the holes, but it's really going to be separated out too much. So I can't just buy a bunch of two pin and three pin in this small one and stack them up to make eight or whatever. It's not going to align. So I did need to get some eight pins as well as twos and threes. So it looks like I got a four pin as well. So then that should really cover what I need in this smaller pitch. So if I take these and put them in the breadboard just for some spacing verification, you can see how they don't really want to go side by side. There's too much space on the ends. So I can jam that in there if I want. By the time I try to add a third one though, it's really fighting to go in. So that's why I did buy some dedicated larger ones. So I can easily get 16 of these side by side. And on a circuit board with more play on those holes, maybe I can get 24 of these, but I'll have to hold them in place and 
solder them to make them stay. And here's one where it's, I think there's five ICs and <laughs> I guess if they are static sensitive, I don't know if they work anymore. And I don't know how to even unwrap this. I can't read the part number easily, but I think I know what it is based on the size. And it is not something like a memory chip. I haven't ordered any E squared proms or anything. So between the five of these, I hope at least one will work. And these are big enough, I don't need a magnifier. MT8816. These are 8 by 16 channel cross point analog switches. And they can take a VCC around 5 volts up to, I think, over 13 volts. And they can pass digital or analog signals through a switch matrix up to 12 volts peak to peak. So you can even go below zero volts, I think. I haven't looked fully into these yet. I've never used them before. So if you have something like an audio signal centered at zero volts or a video signal, I think if you give it a negative reference voltage, you can pass that. But the idea, let me draw something out. So that's just a 4 by 8 for an example. 8 by 16 is 128 different nodes here. So you can set an address basically for one of these cross points here out of 128 available and either close or open the contacts at that junction. So, for example, if I address this node right here, it will close a switch across here, which makes a circuit between, let's call that X and Y, X2 and Y5 now have a circuit path. So, some example applications, this was used, this chip specifically, in things like telecommunications signal multiplexing or video signals. So you can have a bunch of camera signals coming in and you can switch them to display them on different monitors. But a big chip like this I can now easily breadboard and put it in a PCB for some experimenting. I just thought this would be interesting to try out. I gathered up three things here that are supposed to be all related if they are what they say they are. 74LVC245 and these are five pin resistor networks so there's one common and four other resistors so you can use that as a pull up or a pull down network of four resistors and these are SA5.0 it says Zener diode but it's TVS diodes for protecting against surges like ESD. So the way these three things work together in an upcoming project I'm doing, let's look at these resistor networks. It has a dot on the left, so that's most likely the common. Then if I go to the next one over, we got 10K, and the next one, 10K, so there's four different 10K resistors in here, all with the same common pin. So those are going to be, I can't even remember now, if they're going to be pull-ups or pull-downs. Actually, I think the board that these are going on has a jumper to choose whether I tie that common to VCC or ground. And so the 74245 generally is an 8-channel transceiver, basically a buffer where you have an output enable so you can disconnect it from a bus if there's more than one thing all looking to connect to it. And there's also a pin to change the direction of the data. It can only go either one side in and the other side out, all eight channels, or that side in and the other side out for all eight channels at a time. And I only need this to go in one direction. So the LVC part of this 74245. It runs on max 3.3 volts, but the inputs are 5 volt tolerant. So this can be used as a level shifter 
between 3.3 and 5 volts, which is exactly what I need to do. So I'm going to be taking 5 volt signals from off board, and I need to go to a 3.3 volt Raspberry Pi. And since the signals I'm sending in aren't going directly to the Pi, I can't just enable an internal pull up or pull down resistor. So I got a bunch of these. So this is the way I decided to break up all the parts and allow me to work with 5 volt stuff on a Raspberry Pi at 3.3. And because I'm dealing with off board stuff, I wanted extra protection against anything like static electricity. So I'm going to put one of these on each of these inputs, even though generally chips will have built in ESD protection. It's usually only going to be a couple of thousand volts, whereas these can do, I think, even over 15,000 volts. So depending on the environment I put this stuff in, maybe I want 15 or 16 kV of ESD protection instead of maybe 2 kV. This final one I've been waiting for because I ended up needing to do a repair, and I hope this is the right part, and it's for the S993 desoldering gun. And it says 110 volt, which is the right voltage, but it is saying 50 hertz. Of course, I have 60 hertz AC 110, so I don't know about that. I don't know if it matters. We're going to find out at some point. So the S993 desoldering gun finally lost its ability to generate heat. The pump still works when I plug it in and turn it on, but it's gone cold. So I'm going to have to try to replace the heating element here. And I'm going to hope that 50 hertz spec thing there doesn't matter. I got at least a year and a half out of this before this went wrong. And I'm not sure if I might have even caused it because it happened when I was doing something. I was replacing this tip, trying to get a different diameter opening. And when I put this back on, next time I went to use this, it wasn't working. So it started generating smoke out of the tip here, like, I don't know what went wrong. As usual, parts for upcoming projects, restocking and repairing tools and supplies. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping fund all of this and make it all possible.